hello pray and share warriors I am uh, still working on getting things <laughs> oh no it's definitely Monday oh I want that open I want that moved there we go it is definitely Monday happy Monday I hope y'all had an awesome Monday I did it's a pretty good Monday pretty good pretty good pretty good Ew! I just realized something I've got to refresh this I added some things to Facebook at the last minute and I have to refresh it I am learning I am NOT a uh, techie person but I am self-taught so my videos probably are not quite as professional as a lot of people but I don't have expensive equipment either but that's okay I don't blame them for making it look professional this really was not what I planned to do when I grew up but it's okay it's what God planned for me to do and that's what's important so I want to talk to you about the triumphal entry and I know I know tomorrow yesterday not tomorrow yesterday was Palm Sunday I know that I know that I'm a day late but I just I was listening to something last night that was so intriguing and I'll share some of the things that I learned um, last night while I was listening to this guy talk he's like a self-taught lawyer he's taught himself law he's a very very intelligent and uh, anyway I'll share some of that with y'all but tonight is our king is coming our king is coming so we celebrated yesterday that the king came into Jerusalem on a donkey but our king is coming on the clouds too so I just kind of felt like there was a parallel there so that's what I decided to speak about tonight and um, I want to start in prayer and I am not I did not print off where this is supposed to be so it's just gonna be I'm gonna be winging it I think it's in Luke because we had a sermon about this yesterday so it's not like I'm totally oblivious to where the story is I think I can find it I'm gonna pray for God to lead me there because when we pray God listens and so when we lose things I pray a lot of times when I lose things and God helps me find them he takes me right where today I was looking for a policy for my church and I was like oh don't know where it is I don't know where it is but God knew where it was and he led me straight to it and I didn't even pray I just uh, was wondering where it was he knew that I needed it so he knew he knows our needs and he knows where how to meet our needs okay I want to make sure that this doesn't stop a couple of nights it stopped and that's why I leaned down like this to see if that's still recording okay well let's pray let's pray because God listens to our prayers he cares about us he loves us so much he just I mean we can't even imagine how much he loves us he loves us so much God we just come to you and we just want to lift we just want to to praise you God we just want to praise you we just want to thank you we just are so thankful to be your children God we're thankful that you are our creator you are our sustainer you are our protector you are our provider you are our shelter in the storm you are our everlasting father you are from everlasting to everlasting you are the great I am you are the great Jehovah God you know all things that go on everything God you know it all God 
you know all the details of everything that goes on you know all the solutions God to the problems and you know the outcomes God you know the blessings you know you know it all God you are sovereign over all and God you are so magnificent and powerful and mighty but yet you are loving and kind and compassionate you want us to come to you as children just to lift our arms up and go Abba Father Abba Father because you are our Father and God you just want this relationship with us you don't have to have it but you just want this relationship with us you want us to come as your children to bring you the small things the big things um, and the in-between things God you want it all you want it all and God we just thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior to be that last blood sacrifice for us God that we can attain salvation through Jesus and we can attain eternal life God thank you for sending him as a humble king not a prideful king not a royal king but as a humble king coming in humility wanting to be of service God thank you for that God thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us God I just pray for sick people I just lift them up to you pray for a man and some other people that were involved in motorcycle accidents this weekend God I just lift them up to you I pray for healing for their bodies I pray that you would be with them and that they would feel your presence, that you would be with the families and give them strength. Help these people to recover, God, and help them in this recovery to reach out to you, to draw closer to you, to rely on you, to see that even though they were hurt, God, that it could have been their last breath. So God, help them to be thankful and we are thankful that they are still here. We know that their recovery may be hard, God, but we know that you will be with them. God, we just also um, pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved, God so they could receive eternal life, so they can be with you in heaven forever. God, we pray for the prodigals that have wandered away, God. It's so easy to wander away, to think that we have it under control, that we can do it all, God. It's so easy, it's so easy for that to happen to us. So please draw these people back to you, God help them to come for repentance and to come for restoration of their relationship that they left God we also pray for all the many disasters that happen every day God tornadoes last week shootings last week and the week before God there's just constantly something happening and God we just pray that you would be with these people God that they would feel your presence that you would meet their needs through the hands and feet of Jesus and God we pray for the lost we just no we pray for the ones that have lost loved ones we just pray for peace comfort and strength for them God that you would just draw them close to you that they would feel your presence in the absence of their loved one that they would know that you are with them God and we also pray for our country God we cry out for our country we cry out we cry out for revival we cry out for peace we cry out for unity we cry out for love and compassion that we once had for one another God we cry out for that to come back we cry out for a Jesus movement that can't be stopped we cry out that you would raise up these generations God all generations to be a mighty army to stand against untruths to only stand up for your truth God and we just pray that you would give us strength to do that and in Jesus name we pray amen okay 
So, if any of you, I'm sorry, my eye itches. I'm having really a lot of trouble with my left eye itching. I don't know what the problem is with it. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. don't know what is wrong with it but it's been itching for days I think it's allergies probably okay so today um, I really started thinking about this song yesterday this song by um, Hillsong called Hosanna I started thinking about it yesterday morning when I woke up I knew it was Palm Sunday and I started thinking about it and I started thinking about the lyrics and they were playing in my head because that's who I am. That's who God made me. I'm very um, connected with Christian music. I only listen to Christian music, but I'm very connected with the lyrics spiritually and um, I've always had a song in my head. Uh, I'm looking at it as a blessing now. Sometimes it has been a curse because sometimes it's been Veggie Tales, sometimes it's been Phineas and Ferb, sometimes it's been lots of different things. But anyway, this song was playing in my head. And I know I'm a day behind again. You know, yesterday was Palm Sunday. But I kept thinking about this song, you know, all day off and on. Um, but I didn't get it shared. Yesterday would have been the perfect timing, but I just didn't get it done. So Years of the Promise has given me a visual for this scene of Jesus riding in on a donkey for the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, just so clearly. I mean, I can just close my eyes. I can see it. I can see that scene playing out because I've seen it so many times. Um, so yesterday I thought... Uh, we had our sermon was about this so yesterday I thought why didn't Jesus request a white horse you know all decorated like for royalty why didn't why didn't he request that you know a white horse fit for a king you know with all the decked out stuff and him all decked out and everything and you know and it occurred to me because Jesus is our humble king and not the warrior king that Israel had waited on for such a long time. And so that is why that many of them just did not accept Jesus as their king and Messiah because that is not who they had in mind. They had in mind this king, this king that would ride in, this king that would free them from Rome you know, um, they lived, they coexist with the Romans in Jerusalem. They coexisted with the Romans in Jerusalem. And so they wanted someone that would ride in and just set them free. Set them free. And um, I lost my spot. And they're still waiting for their Messiah. They're, they're saying that their Messiah is coming in September. It's going to be the false Messiah. It's going to be the Antichrist that comes in September. If, if they come. I don't know. Anyway. So they're saying that they're having meetings with their Messiah. The rabbis in Israel are saying this. You can look it up on the news. Um, you're not going to see it on mainstream media. You're going to have to go to some kind of Israel news to look it up. But their rabbis are saying that they're meeting with their Messiah. And that in September their Messiah will come. And he will make himself known. And then he's going to leave for a year. And then he's going to come back and stay. So, I don't know. But I know that their Messiah is coming back to get his children and I hope they're ready I hope that they are saved because they'll be left behind okay so they crucified their king because he did not act the way they thought that he should 
He wanted to help the voiceless, the poor, the sick, the very ones that needed him so badly. And because of this, the Israelites rejected their one true king. So it will be a sad day for them when they realize this truth. Many still reject Jesus as king. They do not believe he is God's one and only son. They do not believe that he has come, laid down his life for all to offer eternal life. He was buried for three days. He rose on the third day. He showed himself alive again in many, to many, and he ascended to heaven to prepare a place for all of the children of God that accept him as their savior. Our king is coming. So our king came to Jerusalem, the triumphal entry. Well, our king is coming. He is coming back for only an instant. He is not going to step foot on the earth and walk around like he did before. He is not going to do that. Uh, he's coming back for only an instant. The twinkling of an eye so very quick. Will you be ready when he comes? Please call upon the name of Jesus and be saved if you're not. Time is running out for free will choosing. So accept him now. So what do I mean by free will choosing? I mean now that now God lets us choose freely. We get to choose freely. Once the rapture happens and um, the church is in heaven with Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. It won't be a free will. You will have to choose. It will be forced upon you by the Antichrist and his followers. They will make you choose. You will choose. You will choose. Right now you can choose freely. Right now we can choose. We have the freedom to choose people will not have the freedom then um, Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin time is short the time is now to turn back to the one true God God wants none to perish John 3 16 through 21 call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today okay so that's what I wrote this afternoon and I also shared another video on my other page. I didn't share it on this one. But let's read that scripture. I hope I can find it. I'm thinking Luke. Luke something. Luke 11. No. No, it's not Luke 11. Let's see. Maybe 19. Okay. It is Luke 19. Luke 19, 25 through... Um... Okay, I'm going to read until I feel like I don't want to read anymore. Okay, Luke 19. I think actually we might just read all these stories because I think this is in all of the gospel. Okay, so um, my Bible says entry into Jerusalem. And they, and they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. Uh, well, let's see. All right, we'll start in 26. For I say unto you that thou, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. 
And when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethpage in Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon ye yet never man sat. Loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as, as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he held, beheld the city and wept over it saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy, thine eyes. For the day shall come upon, me, upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, encompass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of my visitation. And he went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And so that was, um, that was when he got angry because they were selling sacrifice animals in the temple instead of outside of the temple. And that made him very angry. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So that's, that's one version of that story. So see, they didn't accept him as he was. They didn't accept this man that came in on this colt donkey. They did not accept him. Had he come in on a white charger with all the royalty and everything and the, and the sword and, and, you know, to look like a warrior, would they have accepted him then? I don't know. I don't know whether they would have or not. Let's see if we can find this in the other in the other ones also. Oh, not in Matthew twenty four. Uh yep. Matthew twenty one. Entry into Jerusalem. So let's read it too. We may just read three out of four. I think this is what we read yesterday. I don't know. Okay, we're just going to read down. We're not going to read the whole thing. Okay, so, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a donkey. <laughs> I don't say that word. A donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. 
Okay, well, he's talking about two now. The other one was, the other account was one. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a colt, uh, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and put them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees. Okay, this is where they get the palm, the palm branches, because they cut branches from the trees, and strawed them in the way. So they put them down on the ground. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Okay, well that matches my song that I did a while ago. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Because they were selling sacrifice animals in the temple. Okay, so let's go look at Mark. I think it's in Mark 2. Because that's what my pastor said yesterday. He was giving us all the all the places where you could find this. There it is. Mark 11. Okay, I'm not going to read it again. I'm going to see if there's anything that stands out. Yeah, it, it sounds a lot like uh, Matthew. So, if anybody asks you uh, where the triumphal entry is, you can tell them that it's four times in the Bible, because I think it's in John also. Uh, no, I don't see it in John. Mary anoints Jesus. Mm -mm. It's an orange John that I see. It's an orange John. Okay. So in three, in three of the Gospels, is the triumphal entry. Well, now let's read. Um, I wish I was a little more prepared tonight. <laughs> Let's read. I'm just kind of having to wing it on where these things are. I know in uh, maybe it's in Second Corinthians. I know it talks about Jesus coming back in one of these. It's not in red, though, because, um, just having to kind of skim through.
Hmm. Okay, well, I know that. Um, okay, I know it's in Thessalonians. It's probably in Corinthians somewhere. I just can't see it. I know where it is in Thessalonians, though. Just kind of wanted to read a different one. All right, maybe tomorrow night I need to be a little bit more. A little more... Uh, prepared. Okay. All right. So our king is coming and our king is coming back. So in 1 Thessalonians uh chapter 4 this talks about our king coming again. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received as us, how ye ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in, sanct in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of con <laughs> concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. And so that's that's a good um it's a good point right there. Um I think that Christianity um even some pastors will look the other way when people are in sin and it's unrepentant. God called us to cleanness and holiness. So how we do that is we repent of our sins. We don't just live in them. We repent of them, which means we turn away from them. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes we have to pray for strength to be able to withstand the temptation. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God, who hath also given us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet and to do all your own business and to work with your own hands as we command you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, 
and with the trump of God, which is the trumpet, the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the dead are going to break out of their graves and they're going to fly out of here because their spirits are in heaven, but their bodies are here in the earth. So they're going to fly out of here and then we're next. We're going, we're going right behind them. It's going to look quite interesting. I don't think there's going to be a sight or there's not a movie. There's not a picture. There's not anything that is going to compare to what that looks like. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, so this is our comfort. That we're not always going to be in this broken and fallen world. We're going to be with Jesus someday. He's going to come and get us. He's going to usher us into heaven. And we, we never have to come back to this broken and fallen world. And after this happens... This broken and fallen world is going to be so much worse than it even is right now. And every year it just gets worse and worse and more evil and more blatant evil and just worse and worse. Okay, so this is chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Okay, that doesn't mean that he is coming at night, specifically. That means that how a thief will sneak in at night, no one's going to expect it. It's just going to, it's going to happen so quickly. And he can come at night. He can come whenever he wants. He can come right now if he wants. For when they shall say peace and safety. How many times have you heard peace and safety lately? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness. We are not in darkness. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open to the truth. This is the truth. We are reading the truth. We know the truth. So we are not children of the darkness. We are children of the light. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And that means, that doesn't mean we can't sleep. It just means we need to always be aware. We need to be aware of it could happen any time. We need to not take for granted that we can do whatever we want to because Jesus isn't coming because we don't know that. We need to be aware. We need to be sober. We need to be um, we need to be watching. We need to be praying. We need to be waiting. We need to be praying for people that are lost. We need to be sharing God's truth with people that are lost we need to be sharing the gospel um, that's what we need to be doing while we wait we don't need to just be sitting around and going well I'm done Jesus is coming to get me I'm done I'm done I just don't have to do nothing we've got a lot to do we have a lot to do the harvest is ripe this is the last harvest before the rapture I am convinced of that nobody can convince me otherwise this is the last harvest before the rapture so our enemy is working hard he's working hard and somebody has come along and sown tares in the field with the wheat and so they are grow growing up together they're growing up together and only God knows only God knows all hearts and minds only God knows which is the wheat and which is the tares and he will separate those at that time 
For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. He has not appointed us to wrath. The wrath that he is going to pour out on this world is going to be tremendous. It's going to be so bad. It's going to be worse than the Left Behind movies. It's going to be so bad. It's going to be exactly what he says in Revelation that he's going to do. It's going to be exactly what his word says. And it's horrific. I don't know why anyone would want to be here for that or take the chance or think, oh, I'll just get saved then. Why would you want to go through the wrath of God when when now is the time to get saved? For God hath not but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and to be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil. That's, that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing evil for evil. Well, that's not what God's Word says. And to any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and, and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. You know, there's I watch a lot of YouTube and I watch a lot of prophecy and stuff. And I don't think they should say bad things about each other because they don't really know. You know, God knows each of us intimately, and He calls us each to do different things and to say different things. So my thing is, if if God has called them to say that and it doesn't line up with the Word, <coughs> then I'm not going to believe it. But if it lines up with the Word and it's a possibility that this is prophecy from God, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Uh, prove all things hold fast that which is good okay we prove all things through the word abstain from all appearance of evil we need to abstain from evil we need to step away from the worldly things right now right now is the time to step away from the worldly things because you're not taking anything from the world with you nothing I like my earrings that my daughter got me because they have crosses but you know what they're not going with me they're going to be left here. And um, I don't know who's going to be living in my house when I'm not here. <clears throat> and the very good of God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So our king is coming. Our king is coming. He is coming. I don't know when. I don't set dates. Because it says in the Bible that only God knows that Jesus doesn't even know. And God will tell Jesus when it's time. And Jesus, you know, he trusts God. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So 
So I want to read something from Titus 2, which is called The Glorious Appearing of Jesus. i got to find it. It's in Titus. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, I'm going to start with 11. It's Titus 2. I'm going to start with 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee so we need to be looking for that blessed hope for that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ so that glorious appearing I, I dropped a picture with um, I don't know my notice my notice that I was doing this and um, it had a picture of Jesus in the clouds and then I did a picture of the triumphal entry because I see them being the same our king is the same the same Jesus that came into Jerusalem is going to come back and get us he loves us so tremendously He's going to come back and get us, and He's going to take us to heaven. And it is going to be a glorious appearing. It is going to be the most glorious appearing. All right, I'm out of notebook again, but I bought me one. I went to Dollar General the other day, and even though I forgot other things that I needed, I remembered my notebook. Okay, so these are my notes from this morning and yesterday. I did not meet with God in... I feel bad, but I ended up watching something. I watched something about state constitutions and the rights of the people and the fact that our governments want us to think that we're not the ones that have the power. They want us to think that we put them in office and they have all the power. Well, that's not true. That's not true in the state constitutions, and it's not true in our country's constitution. We, the people, have the power. We have the power. The power is ours. They are our constituents that are supposed to represent us. But many times, they don't represent what we want. We do not want open borders in Texas. The majority do not want open borders in Texas. But we have open borders in Texas. And we will until we the people stand up and we say enough is enough. We're done with this. So that's what I was doing last night. I was learning from this man that never spent a day in law school. He taught himself by reading these constitutions by reading the law he 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 taught himself he's self-taught um, I don't know whether he's a lawyer I don't think he is because he didn't go to school but he knows a lot about the law because he taught himself so we can teach ourselves many things many things to benefit us and so I think I'm gonna read the state our state's constitution because I'm curious now what's in it okay Enough of that. That's why I didn't have any notes from yesterday. So, good morning, God. Good morning, child. 
I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day to get things done, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, for opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, God. Today was a beautiful day. Um, thank you for all of my blessings, God. Help me to be who you want me to be today, in this new day. Thank you for the idea for tonight. And that was that. That was the idea, the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday. Okay. Because that's when my ideas hit, is in the morning. And then everything that I hear or think cements the idea that God has given me, the message that God has given me. It's not an idea as much as a message. Okay, this is what I want you to share. You've been thinking about this since yesterday. This is what I want you to share. I know that yesterday was it, but this is what I want you to share. So, that's what I did. Um, child, much is going on right now that is very important to the future. Many operations are taking place all over the world against the evil takeover. So much evil is rising up in plain sight. You see that. They don't hide it in their music. It is out there for all to see. All right, there's some disgusting things that have come out, and I will not talk about them on Facebook or YouTube. Um, but I'm not supporting Nike anymore. I'll just say that. Not that I, not that I have been anyway, but because they quit making their shoes so good. About I don't know. Five, six years ago, they quit making their shoes to fit so good, so I quit buying them. I um, started buying Champion, and then, um, oh, 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 what is it? Payless. Payless went out of business, so I'm kind of out of tinny shoes right now. Okay. Uh, but I will not be giving them a dime for nothing, a shirt, nothing after after what they're releasing and you can just google it and see what their newest Tenuchi release is okay soon child it will really be in the face of my children well I feel like this was a step in the direction of it really being in my face All big companies have come aboard for the evil to be on display. They will hide it no more. Their blatant sins, greed, and blasphemy against me, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit makes me want to spew. And uh, the continual support of these evil companies by my children make me sick too. And so he's saying that if these people are not lining up with his word, if the companies that you do business with or on the side of evil, don't do business with them. I'm, I'm soon to um, change something that I have because I feel convicted about it. I know some of the things that they support and I don't support that. So I'm going to go with another company, but I want to do some research about it too. So I am revealing is God. All evil for my children in the, wor the world to decide which path they want. Which path do you want? Do you want to be on the path with Jesus or do you want to be on the path with the world? So the wide one that leads to destruction, that's the worldly path or the one that leads to us. That's God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. There is only one right choice. And that is Jesus. There is only one King forever. And that is Jesus. There is only one Savior. And that is Jesus. Many must choose. Wait a minute. I thought there were three things. Oh, okay, there are. 
There is only one king forever, and that is Jesus. There is only one savior, and that is Jesus. Many must choose that are on the fence. They must choose soon, for time is running out for them. The sand is nearly at the bottom forever, showing that time is running out for them to choose now. Everything that is happening now points to the glorious appearing of Jesus. We read that. These are, when I go back and read these, and, and it lines up with what I just shared with you, those are my glorious confirmations that I was sharing what God wanted me to share. Appearing to Jesus, all is being set in perfect place, child. Keep being obedient to me. I want you to listen to my messenger. Um, I wanted you to listen to my messenger last night. So the guy that I listened to, uh, Dave Jose, he is a Christian. And so that was a pleasure listening to him talk about law. And uh, that we don't know, we don't know the powers that we have. And we don't use the powers that we have. Something is on my camera. Oh, it's my phone. It's my phone that's on my camera. Okay. Um, the people must take their power back and quit covering, quit cowering under laws not meant to be against them. So even God wants us to take our power back. And how we do that is we just flood. We flood our representatives with calls, with emails, with... I'm going to look into it. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to be a, a nuisance. And I said, I see all this clearly, God. Time is running out for many to choose. Everything taking place points to the rapture of your children. Thank you for meeting me this morning, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me in all I ask you, all I ask today. The king's coming soon. The king is coming soon. Be ready and keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. Do not stop. The reunion is soon, child, and all will be in perfect peace, love, and joy here. All await the arrival of the bride. Stay pure, child, for the bridegroom cometh. And I said, Maranatha, God, because I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, ready. All right, well, my friend Josie hasn't shown up tonight. I hope she's okay. I didn't see her at church yesterday, but... She could have been sitting in the back. I don't know. I don't see half the people that are in church sometimes. Because we sit close up. Okay. So this is God's invitation for you. <laughs> I can't. All right, maybe it looks better back there. Oh, excuse me, I have hiccups. I made a new chicken dish tonight. And it apparently is not sitting well with my tummy. Okay, so this is an invitation into God's heaven. Have you ever been invited? You know, has anybody ever said, hey, have you accepted Jesus as your savior? Would you like to accept Jesus as your Savior? Time is running out. It really is. Some things are coming that are not going to be pleasant. I can't really tell you what they are because it's, it's a feeling that I have. It's a spiritual feeling that I have that um, things are soon to change. So don't keep waiting. Please don't keep waiting. So it says, have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. You know, that goes for 
people that have stepped away from their relationship with God. You know, God will forgive you. God will restore your relationship with Him. You have to turn around, though. You have to turn around from where you are and go back to God. He is where you left Him. Wherever you left Him is where He's still waiting on you. He is not the one that stepped away. When we lose our relationship with God, and I don't mean our salvation, when we, when we lose that close relationship with God, it's because we stepped away, not because He did. It's because we did. We decided that we could handle it on our own. So just ask for forgiveness. That's all you have to do. You don't have to get saved again. You don't have to get baptized again. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness and ask for strength to uh, help you to stand up to the temptation that has separated you from God. Okay, well here are some scriptures that go with salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 For God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14.6 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. So this is um, a description of our reward, which is heaven. So if you accept Jesus as your Savior, then you will be in heaven with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, the angels, all the saints, everyone that's in heaven, all the... Um, everyone that's in heaven. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven and prepared as a bride uh, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So this is the salvation prayer. And I'm going to break in between the sentences and give you a chance to repeat after me if you would like. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you are God's one and only Son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose on the third day. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer and you meant it from your heart, 
and the angels in heaven are rejoicing they're like having a party and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you are now safe sealed and sanctified by God through Jesus his son and so when our king comes again and our king is coming then you will be going to so please don't keep I just worry about people that put this decision off okay so as a new believer read God's Word and start in Matthew start in Matthew 1 and pray pray to God and praise I don't have any praise and worship music on tonight because I forgot to go get my phone that I do that on so pray praise find some praise and worship music and praise God gospel old gospel new gospel um, contemporary Christian praise and worship there's so many times there's so many types uh, rap some people like rap music I'm not much of a fan but God has actually gotten me to where I can understand what they're saying which makes me like it a little bit better um, but anyway pray for God to lead you to a church that teaches about Jesus that um, praises and worship is, worships Jesus and baptizes like Jesus was baptized and he will he'll lead you where he wants you to go if you live close enough come to our church Walnut Springs Baptist Church we have an awesome pastor and awesome leaders so alrighty it's time to pray again so I've done everything that God called me to do I uh, shared what I put on Facebook I uh, shared in the Bible God's Word I shared my quiet time I shared the gospel so it's time to pray so my friend's not here to ask her what her prayer requests are so I think I want to pray I want to pray about human trafficking I want to pray about every child being rescued I want to pray about um, I went to a fundraiser on Saturday night here in my hometown I was very moved because a 15 year old girl put the whole event on but I was very sad because more people from our community didn't show up I mean it was a good turnout but I know what people in this town do for other fundraisers and I just think it's sad that people don't take this subject seriously and they kind of go oh that's somebody else's problem but they don't realize how quickly it can become their problem so I know I have talked about human trafficking before but God really has me it is on the forefront of my mind a lot and with these kids coming in from the south I'm really worried that a lot of them will get trafficked and so it's kind of like a lot of people were getting busted and people kids were getting rescued but then we have this whole new influx of it and it just it makes me mad and sad and disgusted I'm like God I want to spew it makes me want to spew because I don't get it I don't get that people think they have the right to treat children like that but this is an evil and fallen world and the more we are in this world the more we're gonna see we're, the more we're gonna see the truth about the evil rise up and the more truth we're going to see rise up above 
the evil because the truth wins. Jesus won. Jesus won. He defeated death. And he won. And he will be our king forever. But we live in a fallen world where people have free will to do bad things too. They have free will to do good things. They have free will to do bad things. And it makes me sad. So I'm going to dedicate praying to this and to um, I don't have a card with me for the organization. It's unbound. It's unbound something. Let's see if I can look it up on the internet real quick. It's one good thing about having the internet right here at your fingertips. Although I don't know how to put things in my camera like a lot of people do. Unbound North Texas. Unbound North Texas is what it is. And they are in Fort Worth. So if you know anyone that needs help from human trafficking, there is a 800 numbers. Um, yeah, Unbound North Texas. I need to get this out of my way. I'm going to look at that in a minute. Because I am going to volunteer to help. And um, I don't know how much money they took in, but I don't think there was... They might have taken in what they expected to take in. Anyway, this 15-year-old girl put this together with adults and some of her peers. And it was really a good fundraiser. Just to raise awareness, because I think that's the problem. People are not aware. Just this morning, another Amber Alert. I don't know all the details, but I can't help but think that it was somebody that was abducted. 14 year old girl you know you can't help but think that it could be a family dispute too that happens but we just need to be aware of what things are going on we need to be aware that Jesus is coming it's time to let go of the things of the world we're not taking any of it with us we need to be aware of our surroundings and that bad people are around we need to protect our children like like no other time ever in our history we need to protect our children they are being preyed upon and they are being used for some atrocious evil and some horrific evil that a lot of people don't know anything about I don't know whether it's a blessing or a curse that I have um, I've had this information put in front of me in many, many different settings. Um, Alright, well I'm going to pray. And that's what I'm going to pray about. I'm going to pray about Unbound North Texas. I'm going to pray about where God wants me, how God wants me to plug in to help them. And I'm going to pray about all the children that are out there tonight that are innocent, that they have no voice. They're stuck in the darkness with the evil. If they need a rescuer, they need someone to rescue them. I'm going to pray for the rescuers to, you know, have strength and courage and to be safe, but to get the job done. I'm going to pray for our judicial systems, to root out all the corruption in our judicial system so these people go to prison where they belong or yeah go to prison I, I really want them in little bitty cages like how they keep some of these kids but I know that's not how our judicial our judicial system works but a lot of them just get a slap on the hand they've got the money to pay off it's just not right it's just not right Justice is not blind anymore. 
Justice took, Lady Justice took her blindfold off and now it depends on who you are and how much money you have. I'm not saying all judicial systems are corrupt, please. But some are. Some are. And that's the truth. I'm not saying all the government uh, entities are corrupt, but some are. And that's the truth. Alright, well I'm going to pray. Some of our government entities are very much involved in this. Also, and that's the truth. God, we just come to you, God, and I just especially want to pray for Unbound North Texas tonight, God, and that you would just be with these that have been rescued. Help them to rehabilitate, God. Give them a new life. Help them to realize that they're, what they have been forced to do does not have to define their future. That they have a very bright present and future, God. They just need to stay close to you. They just need to stay close to the people that can help them. God, we just pray. We pray for all the many, many children out there that are being trafficked, that are being used in such horrific ways, God. That are being caged like animals, God. That are, are kept in tunnels, God, in the dark all the time. God, we pray for people to rise up and rescue them. We pray for rescuers for them. We pray, God, that you would protect the rescuers, that you would um, give them guidance and wisdom. Take them to the children, God. Lead them to the children. Protect them. Give them strength and courage, God, to stand up to this evil, evil adversity, God. We pray that these people would go to jail. So we pray for our judicial system, God. We pray for good, clean judicial systems, God, that are not corrupt, that are do not have their hand out for a payoff to look the other way, God. We pray for non-corrupt law enforcement and non-corrupt government entities that care about these children, God that will go out there and they will work hard to free them. We pray for the advocates that come in, God, and they um, they volunteer to counsel them, God. Counsel them through horrific memories, God. We just pray, God. We pray for this industry to just go down. That there would be no desire for people to be on the internet looking at children on the internet in disgusting ways. That God, you would infiltrate these people. That you would show them something so much better. That they would quit preying on our innocent children, God. Using our innocent children for their sacrifices. For their disgusting things that they do. God, we just pray. We pray for you to reign and for you to help, God. For them to feel your presence even when they're alone. God, we just cry out to you. Just cry out for that army that will stand up for what is right. For that army that will stand up for what is true. For that army that will stand up for the rights that you gave us and the rights that our lawmakers, our forefathers gave us, God. The power that we have over the government, God. I pray that many eyes would be opened, that many ears would be open to the truth. God, we just pray. We just lift all these things up to you, God. There's so much. But God, we know that you are sovereign over all and there is not anything done in secret or hidden from you. You know everything, God. And we know, God, you have a loving heart. You will forgive those people that have done harm to children, God. 
you will forgive them because you're a forgiving God. God, we just pray that all truth would rise up above the lies, the corruption, and the deception, God. That everything would be made clear. That blinders would be removed, God. That eyes would be open. They would see so clearly for the first time in their lives that their ears would be unstopped. That their ears would be open, God. That their hearts would be open to the truth. That their hearts would be softened towards Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, well I just felt led to pray that way. I know it's different. But I go where God leads me. And I feel like that's where He's leading me. He's leading me to this organization for a reason. He put this organization in front of me for a reason. And I just want to be a help somehow. Just, if nothing else, want to be a voice just to go and talk about how horrific all this is. Alright, well, I hate to leave on a bad note like that. Um, let me give you a blessing from God. Because no matter what happens, God is still on His throne. And someday, all of our innocence, their torture, their everything that they go through, is going to end abruptly when Jesus comes back. So that's our hope. That's our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ because those kids are going they're going and now I know why I know why they're going because this is going to be hell on earth and God is getting all of them out of the way of the evil He is removing them from the evil I used to think, why is God taking the children with the rapture? Why is He taking the innocent children? It's because He doesn't want them used or abused anymore. They will be safe forever with Him. Many are. Many that have succumbed to death through the things that these people do, they are safe with Him. him. And they don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. So that is our that is our good note. That when all this is said and done, when Jesus comes to get the church, all the children go to. All of them go. The older ones, if they're not saved, they may be left behind. Only God knows the age of accountability. We don't. I do know that bar mitzvahs happen at 12. So a lot of times people go, well, it's 12. But a lot of people, like Seth, like our son, he's 17. But he doesn't have a mind of a 17-year-old. So he is one of the innocents. And he will go to. And, and he's not alone. There's, there's a lot. There's even adults that are innocent. I'll go to, I think. Pretty sure. Okay, only God knows. Okay, so the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. There's not a lot of peace right now. There's a lot of craziness. There's a lot of bizarreness. But this, this is our truth. This is what we measure things up to. This is it. So if somebody, if you hear something, 
crazy bizarre and it doesn't line up with this, then don't go with it. Just don't. Like all the all the word I'm gonna call it word war. We have word war right now. There are some words that cannot people do not want to hear, they offend them. That's word war. And there is no way they can ban every word in the English language. It just doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't make any sense, then it doesn't line up with this. So just leave it alone. Alright. Let people be who they are. God created them to be who they are. Let them be who they are. God created everyone to get saved. We can't force people to get saved. It's their choice. We can share the truth. And we can share the gospel. But we can't force people. We can't drag them into salvation. It has to be their choice. Alright. So I already prayed. So, and I blessed y'all. So if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comments. If you have any comments about anything that I said, good or bad, put them in the comments. I'm okay with people having an opinion. I do not get all bent out of shape. I will not probably even reply. I'll read your comments, but I may not even reply uh, because I feel like I'm doing what God's called me to do. And um, I am not... <laughs> I am not perfect at this. I know that. I know I lack many things. I lack good equipment. I lack a lot. But it's okay. Because God didn't tell me to go out and buy the best of the best equipment. He said, He said, share my truths and share the gospel. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, well God bless all of you and your families abundantly. Uh, have an awesome rest of your night in an awesome tomorrow which is Tuesday I went and did my work today so um, I'm not off tomorrow I still have things to do but I don't have to do my work so I already did it today alright so much love much love one of these days I'm going to get so good at this uh, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again good night